Hey folks, welcome to Storing Profits. It's Patrick here and my host, James, <laughs> as always. And uh, James, some interesting stuff that's happened in the world today in the last oh couple God. of days. Uh, yes. Apparently it's falling apart. The world has gone completely crazy and Elon Musk has bought Twitter. Totally bought Twitter. All of it. They they folded like a house of cards and just gave up for some reason after like trashing, like dumping their company, really. Right. Like. They uh, like, I don't know, what's the market saying about them? Well, so it, it's it's really a complicated type story and it's really hard to kind of nail down where and what's going to, the fallout's going to be. But the, the first thing I want to talk about is we, we've got a conversation that we've started previously about free speech. And right. the number one thing that people are talking about right now is how is this going, going to fall out in the free speech realm? What's going to happen? People are talking about leaving the platform. People are talking about rejoining the platform. It's it's a very weird time as far as the, the Twitter process itself. But where we are in the, in the stock market is Elon Musk has decided to purchase uh, Twitter at a stock price of $54.30. So this ends up being about a $43 billion market cap evaluation for the stock. We'll get into this a little later because I want to do a real breakdown of what this means for the shareholders, but as well for a lot of different things. But a question I have for you is, you know, what does this mean for free speech? Where do you think that this is going to leave, you know, the average American, Canadian, North American or citizen of the world? And where do we go from here? Well, I think to start, uh, there's going to be like a turnover. So right now, like you said, people are going to want to jump off Twitter and people are going to jump on Twitter that haven't been able to say what they wanted for quite a while. Uh, I, I, for one, uh, think it's a fabulous thing. I think that uh, the fact that it's going back to what it was originally intended to be. It was originally intended to be a voice that everyone could communicate on, share ideas and uh, get their voice out. And then over time, it's they started uh, turning off people's voices, started deciding who whose opinion was right, whose opinion was wrong. And uh, it, I think it it kind of hurt Twitter a little bit because there was a, a, a group of people that left like like we were talking last time. They, they were they even made another platform that people could go to and talk on. Right. Uh, but I think now all those people will come back. Of course, you're going to get some probably liberals, mostly, uh, that will jump off initially. Uh, but I think after a year or whatever, once Twitter gets strong again and people understand that it's not just um, falling apart and it's not always, it's not, I think the idea that some people have right now is that it's going to become this platform that uh, hate is going to be spread. I don't think that's the case. I think that the majority of good citizens, even whether you're conservative or liberal, aren't even conservatives, even conservatives, <laughs> even conservatives like yourself, oh, it's uh, aren't, aren't, aren't like based in hate. You're right. based in, you know, you care about the common good of everybody. Sure. You just have a different voice. Right. And I think once we start figuring out that these voices can all be heard, it can all be shared that people will all come back to Twitter and it, it, it will be a success. And I think that that might be what Elon's vision might be right now. So the big thing that I'm hearing right now and, and kind of the echo chamber that is, you know, uh, the, the Twitter verse and, and the social media stuff is, you know, this kind of an echoing that Elon Musk is going to single handedly hand an election over to basically whoever he wants. Uh, and the left is terrified right now that that becomes Donald Trump. Uh, cause again, it sounds like Donald's probably going to run again. That's kind of where I think he's, he's at politically where he thinks he wants to. And he also feels, I think that he should have won the last election. So one of the things that I think that, uh, the left is terrified of right now is this, this open dialogue. And this is where I get really, I get very lost in this argument about Twitter is how, if you're about free speech, if you're about open dialogue, if you're about inclusiveness, how is this your concern? How are people like, I'm leaving, I'm out. Like if this viewpoint, again, Elon Musk hasn't taken it over yet. It ha there's been no changes. There's been nothing. But people are like, I'm out. The, the old, I'm moving to Canada. That was kind of the Donald Trump <laughs> thing when people were jumping. Yeah. We don't want you. <laughs> we, we don't, don't want you. Right? <laughs> as far as this whole platform thing, I, I just, I wonder what's going to happen. And so- as far as the market dynamics with it, uh, the price of Twitter stock has just 
gone crazy. It's ran up. It's been a huge exponential curve here. And what we're looking at now, and I want to do a deep dive on this because this affects so much more than just Twitter. And the reason that is, is that Twitter is being, uh, sorry, Tesla, which Elon Musk is, you know, a, a, an owner of and a, a large shareholder of, those stocks are being leveraged, okay? So we talk a lot about here every day about finances, personal finances, home finances, all these sorts of things. And one of the things that we talk about in great depths is being able to leverage your assets, whether it be your home, whether it be a residential investment that you've put out there, leveraging your assets to borrow against for your future assets. So to be able to borrow some of the money of your current residence to leverage into your next residence. And Elon's doing this through stocks. The issue is, is that Elon Musk is kind of in a very risky situation right now because what he's doing is he's leveraging his Tesla stocks at a threshold that if Tesla shares fall 20, 25%, he's going to have what's called a margin call. And that's when the market basically comes to him. The market makers come to him and say, you need to sell your shares of Tesla right now. Well, today, Tesla down 10%. Hmm. The market took a dump today. Okay. Yeah. So when that happens, Tesla is now 15% away from a mass liquidation event that Elon would be forced into. Now, right. now let's think about this for a second. Tesla not only is a single company, but it also makes up a massive portion of the NASDAQ. It also makes a massive portion of the Russell, uh, the Russell indicators. So there is a huge liability issue for the general market. If this liquidity event happens and Elon is forced to sell. Right. That's huge. So I, I I think Elon's probably played his hand maybe a little bit over. Uh, we're going to have to see what the market comes up with. But if we, like we've been talking about recession for a long time, if we continue that this recession talk, this could be scary and it could yeah. tank an entire market. Hmm. Well, you are, well, Elon has never been one not to be a, a risk taker, uh, usually successful risk taker, but uh it would be a shame if you tank the market. That would be a funny uh, uh, offshoot of buying Twitter. Uh, right. <laughs> so if, if this happens, so we're, we're all looking to, you know, buy low, sell high. Mm -hmm. And if you're the richest man in the world, you've done this once or twice. So yeah. is there some, is there a, a parameter in which Elon Musk does this, is able to tank the market, is able to then purchase assets at a greater return, whether it be Tesla, whether it be other private entities at a low price during a recession that he helped create yeah, and then flip and go from there. I think there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I think the next mm -hmm. little while here is going to be very interesting. I want to take a deep dive. Maybe our next video is going to be a little deep dive into what I'm talking about and show people how this affects uh, the markets. So what I'm going to say, folks, is stay tuned. I think that's what we're going to jump into right now in our next video. Check it out. And we're going to go over some market trends. Thank you again, folks. I appreciate it. And uh, see you, see you soon. Have a great day. Hey, James from Soaring Profits and Pat over here. Uh, aren't those great, two great looking cartoons? Now, with that being said, folks, obviously we are not financial advisors and we're certainly not your financial advisors. We don't know your risk tolerance. We don't know if you got money in the bank. We don't know what your situation is. So when we're having these discussions, we appreciate you tuning in. However, have some discretion. If you make a million dollars with us, we're glad to have you. If you lose a million dollars, that's on you as well, folks. Let's work together. Let's make some money and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, guys.